Oh, how love I thy law. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. It is my meditation all the day. Though through thy commandments. Though through thy commandments. Has made me wiser than my enemies. Has made me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding. I have more understanding. Than all my teachers. Than all my teachers. For thy testimonies, for thy testimonies, are my meditation, are my meditation. I understand more, I understand more than the ancients, than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet, I have refrained my feet from every evil way, from every evil way, that I might keep thy word, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed, I have not departed. From thy judgments. From thy judgments. For thou hast taught me. For thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words. How sweet are thy words. words unto my taste. Unto my taste. Yea. Yea. Sweeter than honey. Sweeter than honey. To my mouth. To my mouth. Through thy precepts. Through thy precepts. I keep understanding. I keep understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp. Unto my feet, unto my feet, and a light, and a light, unto my path, unto my path. I've read Psalms 119, verse 97 through 105. May the Lord give a blessing and reading and doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of the Living God. I'm Brother Rodney and Brother Caleb will be reading today. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody out there in internet land. Uh, today's lesson is simply entitled, Grace. Grace. Um, you know, I just simply entitled this because there's so many definitions for grace. You know, in the Bible, man's definitions. Uh, you know, it's just so many definitions for grace. So, uh, that's what we're going to be dealing with today, grace. And uh, one in particular that we're going to really focus on is the grace that they say, you know, we're not under law, but we're under grace. Meaning we don't have to keep the law no more because we're under grace. Now, we're not going to so much focus on the law, but we are going to deal with it just a little bit. And then we're going to show you that the, gr the grace that you are under right now. Okay? So now, like I said, there are so many definitions for grace that we can't stand, stand here. I couldn't stand here and give you all. We could do the lesson just on giving definitions of grace almost. Okay? So, we're just going to deal with some of the definitions of grace. But one in particular we're going to deal mainly concentrate on the one that they say, well, you're not under the law, but you're under grace. The grace that God or Jesus came to put you under. Let's go to uh, Genesis first. Let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2. And we're going to pick it up in verse 15. Genesis 2 and 15. <clears throat> Genesis 2 and 15. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden uh -huh. to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Uh-huh. For in the day that thou eateth thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, you see what he told me? He said the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Say so you can't eat from that tree. You, can, uh, 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 you can't eat from that tree because the day that you eat from that tree, you're going to surely die. Mm -hmm. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But now... <clears throat> Did, after they ate of this tree, did they die that day? No, they didn't die that day, but then they did die that day. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that, but go ahead and read. 18. And the Lord God... I tell you what, skip down. Skip down to verse... Uh, we're going to get straight to it. Skip down to verse 21. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Uh-huh. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man 
made he a woman uh -huh. and brought her unto the man. So now again, we're getting ready to bring the woman on the, in the picture now. Go ahead and read. 23. Uh -huh. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Go ahead. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Uh -huh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Go ahead. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. All right, so now, so, you know, so they ate of this tree, right, which the Lord commanded them not to eat of, the tree of knowledge good. He said, the day, the day that you eat of this tree, you're going to die. Right? Yes, now, sir. let's go right on into three and one. Three and one. Go ahead and read. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Uh huh. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, the trees of the garden. Uh huh. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. So he said, A tree that is in the midst of the garden, we can, we, we can eat of that fruit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Neither shall you. But we shall not eat it, they said. Let me read it again. Mm -hmm. Verse, uh, uh, pick it up in verse, uh, read it again. Verse, pick it up in verse uh, 2 again. 2. Mm -hmm. And the woman said to the serpent. I lost my train of thought for there for a minute. That's all right, brother. Come on with it. Go ahead. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh huh. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said. Ye shall not eat of it. Uh huh. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now, what is this fruit that he's telling us not to eat of? Is this literal fruit? Because you know we have people saying that you not that uh, uh, Adam ate a, uh, Eve ate an apple. Mm. No, Come on. <laughs> no. It doesn't say what kind of fruit. What kind of fruit she ate? Does it? Well, when can you eat an apple to make yourself smarter? That has never been done. That's but right. go ahead and read though. Verse four. Uh huh. So, the, we, so are we talking about literal fruit? No, we're not talking about literal fruit. Let me show you what fruit we're talking about in a minute here. But go ahead and read. What verse you at? Four. Go ahead. And the serpent said to the woman, uh -huh. Ye shall not surely die. So now what did he do? He just lied to her. Yes, Because he the father of lies. And Satan is the father of lies. That's who this serpent is. It's Satan. That's right. And so now he the father of lies. And that's just what he just did to her. He just lied to her. So you, God said you're going to die in the day that you eat thereof. He said you're not. Now who right? God or Satan? God. God is right. Yes, sir. So we know Satan just lied to her, didn't he? Yes, sir. That's why the book called the Father lies. But go ahead and read. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, uh -huh. then your eyes shall be opened. Go ahead. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good now, for now, food. Now, hold it now. She talking to this. She talking to Satan, right? And, and she said, now, when she saw that this tree was good for food, who she talking to? Where's she getting this food from? Mm -hmm. From Satan, ain't she? Yeah. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye uh -huh. and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Because it was pleasant to the eye because Satan was covered in all these precious stones and precious jewels. So it was pleasant to her eyes. Go ahead and read. She took up the fruit thereof uh -huh. and did eat. Now we only saw that she was talking to Satan, didn't we? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's all we saw. But go ahead and read. And did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat go ahead and the eyes of them both were open go ahead and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons now let's show you this fruit that they ate of let's go to Hosea the 10th chapter Hosea 10 we're going to show you this fruit that they ate of Hosea 10 and we're going to pick it up at verse if you go by Daniel and keep going over you run into Hosea Keep going forward, you're running Hosea after Daniel. Hosea 10 and verse 13. Hosea 10 and 13. Audrey, I think it's a problem up there. Hosea 10 and 13. Go ahead and read. Let's see what fruit she ate of. Go ahead. 
Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have re reaped iniquity. Uh -huh. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Ooh, that's what fruit she ate. They ate of the fruit of lies. That's right. Because Satan is the father of lies. Who was she talking to? She was Satan. talking to Satan. That's right. She was talking to the serpent. Yes, sir. Read that again. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Uh huh. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Go ahead and finish that. Because thou didst trust in thy way. Uh huh. In the multitude of the mighty men. He said, You trust in your way in the multitude, mighty, mighty multitude of men. So these are, this is the fruit that they ate of, the fruit of lies. Because she was standing there talking and saying, Let's go back to Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis 3, and we're going to pick it back up. We can pick it up at uh, where we left off at verse 8. Genesis 3 and 8. 3 and 8. <clears throat> when you get it, go ahead and read. Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh -huh. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Go ahead. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. Uh huh. You see that? He said, I was, I was afraid because I was naked. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Now hold it now. You see that? He said, who? It didn't say what told you that you was naked like that fruit. Come on. He said, who told you that you was naked? Because who do we see Eve talking to? She was talking to that serpent, which was Satan, right? That's right. And Satan told her she was naked. That's right. You understand? Then she went and told her husband, you, we naked. Come on, bro. Go ahead and read. Because she saw that the fruit was good, and then she gave it up to her husband, didn't she? That's right. Go That's ahead and right. read. Who told thee that thou was naked? Uh-huh. Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Uh-huh. And the man said, The woman who thou, who thou gave her to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Go ahead. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The servant beguiled me. And I did eat. You see that? She said, a servant beguiled me and I did eat. Go ahead and read. 14. Uh-huh. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Uh-huh. And above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. Go ahead. And dust shalt thou eat of all the days of thy life. All right. Now skip down to verse 20. Because the Lord passed out his punishment to the serpent. Then he passed out his punishment to the woman, and then she passed out his punishment to Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 20, uh, skip down to verse 20. Go ahead and read. 20. Uh-huh. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, uh -huh. because she was of the mother of all living. Now, you know, I just want to take up a little time right here. He said, Adam, because, uh, you know, people say that there was a creation before Adam and Eve. That's right. Well, how could there be a creation before Adam and Eve when the book said it? Uh, Eve was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. So there was no creation before Adam and Eve if Eve was the mother of all living. If Eve was the mother of all living, that means Adam was the father of all living then, right? Amen. Make it plain, make it plain, brother. Yes, sir. You know, because people try to say there was creation before Adam and Eve. Because where did Cain get his wife from? He had to get his wife from among his sisters. Seeing that all the people came out of Adam and Eve, all the flesh and blood people like us, came out of Adam and Eve. Because Eve, Adam and Eve had more sons than they had Seth. And then, uh, uh, then uh, between that 930 year span, which we're going to read about, of Adam's life, he had more sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So maybe Cain, I don't know. The book don't say when Cain went to the land or not. It don't say that. It don't say, well, we don't say exactly where he got his wife from, but he had to get her from among his, his sister because she was the mother of, Eve was the mother of all living. That's plain as day. Yes. But go ahead, dog. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Until Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin. Now, where did he? clothe them. You see that? So something died, though, didn't it? Mm -hmm. See, read that verse again. 21. Uh-huh. Until Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin uh -huh. and clothe them. Now you see that? So something died, the Lord killed something, uh, an animal, and made them coat, uh, clothes. 
coats of skins. So something died for their sins then, didn't it? Amen. Make it plain. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us uh -huh. to know good and evil. Go ahead. And now. Now you see that he said the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. See, because Adam was not meant, Adam and Eve were not meant to die. They were supposed to live forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said he'd become as one of us. But go ahead and read. And now, lest he put... Oh, now, who is this us? Excuse me. Who is this us? <laughs> yes, sir. Who is this us? This God talking, but he said us, though, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So this more, this would imply more than one Godhead member right here, didn't he? He said us, didn't he? Make it plain. Yes, sir. We're looking at two Godhead members right here. But go ahead and read. And now... Lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat uh -huh. and live forever. Therefore the Lord You see that he said and live forever because it's just a matter of knowledge. It was a matter of knowledge back then with Adam and Eve to live forever. And it's a matter of knowledge to live forever now. Ain't it? Teach, my brother. Because when the Lord returned, if you ain't got this knowledge, this knowledge not in, you ain't filled with his holy, his Holy Ghost, his word, you ain't gonna get eternal life neither. So it's a matter of knowledge then, and it's a matter of knowledge now yes, for you to get eternal life. That's right, brother. I'll tell you, I'm sorry, read that verse one more time. Come on. <laughs> and the Lord God said, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is, is become as one of us uh -huh. to know good and evil. Go ahead. And, lie, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life uh -huh. and eat and live forever. And live forever. Go ahead and read. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So man was meant to live forever. Adam and Eve were meant to live forever. But since they sinned against God, the Lord said, no, we got to get them up out of here. Because, <laughs> you know, he done sinned against me. So now, unless he take forth the, and eat of the tree of life, he going to know how to live forever. So let's get him out of here. That's right, brother. Yes, sir. Because you're going to, by the dust of your brow, you're going to eat and you're going to till the ground. That's how you're going to eat, man. Mm -hmm. And then dust you are and dust shall you return now. That's right, brother. But now, let's see. Let's see, let's go to uh, uh, Genesis, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Genesis 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Genesis 5 and 3. When you get it, go ahead and read. And Adam lived 130 years. Uh-huh. And begot his son in his own likeness. Uh-huh. Go ahead. After his image, and called his name Seth. Now, I thought he said, in the day that you eat up thereof, and they did eat thereof, didn't they? Right. That you was going to die. So why didn't they die that day? I'm going to show you why they didn't die that day. But go ahead and read. And called his name Seth. Because uh, Adam lived 130 years. But let's see how long he really lived. Go ahead and read. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth was 800 years. Uh-huh. And he begot sons and daughters. See, he begot sons and daughters during that 800 year span of his life, right? That's right. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Uh-huh. And all the days that Adam lived was 930 and 30 years, and he died. You see that? He lived 930 years, and he died. That's right. So why did he die that day? He did die that day, but he didn't die that day that he ate of that fruit. He died. That. Make you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to show you why. But anyway, so Adam lived 930 years, didn't he? That's right, yeah. brother. Let's, let's just bring a little something on the scene real quick. Skip down. I mean, go down to verse uh, 25. Go down to verse 25 and read it. 25. Uh-huh. And Methuselah lived 180 and 7 years. Uh-huh. And begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begot Lamech 780, excuse me, 780 and two years, uh -huh. and begot sons and daughters. Go ahead. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years, uh -huh. and he died. You see that? He lived, now, this is the oldest man recorded to live, 969 years. Adam lived 930 years, right? Mm -hmm. Now. Let's go to uh let's go to Genesis the sixth chapter. Let's go right on to Genesis six chapter. Pick it up in verse three. Genesis six and three. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Uh huh. Yet 
His days shall be 120 years. Now the Lord kicked the age down to 120 years. You understand? First of all, the oldest man lived to 969 years. Now he done kicked man's age down to 120 years. Make it plain. 120 years. Uh, uh, um, um, go to verse uh, Go to verse 7 and read that. Let's bring something on the scene here. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Whom I have created from the face of the earth, uh -huh. both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Uh -huh. But Noah found good, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, that's what I mean by there's so many definitions of grace in the Bible. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to put, I just want to bring that on the scene while we're over here right now. But we're going to get back to this, we're going to get to this grace in a minute. So now, so he kicked man's age down to 120 years, right? That's right. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Psalm 90. Psalm 90. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Psalms 90, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Because he said, the day that you eat thereof, uh, you're going to die. On that, uh, uh, Adam, and we saw Adam live 930 years, and then Methuselah lived 969 years. But then he kicked man's age down to 120 years, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He gonna do something else with man's age. Psalm 90 and verse 10. Go ahead and read. The days of our years are three score years and ten. You see that? Now he's going to kick man's days down again. The days of our years are three score and ten, which is what? Seventy years, right? Come on. Seventy years. He's going to kick man's days down from 969 years to 120 years, now to 70 years, right? Mm -hmm. Finish that. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years. Uh -huh. yet Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. All right, so now, uh, so now he kicked man's age down to 70 years, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, go back now. Go back to verse 1. Go back to verse 1. I want to show you why when the book say, in that very day, you're going to die. When you eat the fruit thereof, the, 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 eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Skip, uh, go back to verse uh, 1. Read verse 1. Psalm 90 and 1. Go ahead. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Uh huh. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the, and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Uh huh. Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and saith, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are put are but yesterday. Excuse me. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. You see that? For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. Go ahead. And as a watch in the night. And as a watch in the night. So now let's get a little bit clear more definition of what he's talking about. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter the third chapter. 2 Peter the third chapter. Let's get a little bit more clear definition of what he's talking about. 2 Peter, the third chapter. He said, a thousand years, but as yesterday in thy sight, right? That's right. And a, like a sleep in the night. But now, we're going to get a clear definition of what he's talking about. We're going to 2 Peter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. 2 Peter 3 and 8. Go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Uh, he said, I don't want you to like understanding this one thing. Go ahead. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. You see that? But one day is with the with the Lord is as what? A thousand years. That's why Adam, but Adam died in that day, didn't he? That's right. Why? Because he lived only 930 years. He didn't live to uh, 1,000 years, did he? That's right. So he died in that day because a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Teach. Now, what about Methuselah? Methuselah lived to be 969 years, but he didn't live to be a thousand years, though, did he? That's right, brother. He plan. died in that day. Make it plain. Then the Lord started kicking man's age down 120. Then 70 years old. Mm -hmm. And if you get 80 years old, it's by reason, by strength, right? That's right. Yes, sir. So Adam did die in that day. He died within that thousand-year day of the Lord. Amen. 
But one day with the Lord is a thousand years. He didn't spiritually, he kept, he didn't spiritually die because Adam was the son of God. Then you got Seth, right? Mm -hmm. Then if you trace Jesus, let us all the way back up to Seth and Adam, up to, and then back to God. So these are the sons of God. So he didn't spiritually die. Okay? But he did die in that day because one day with the Lord is a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, 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 Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Romans 5 and 12. Romans 5 and 12. So Adam, he brought death on man, didn't he? Sure enough. He put death on man. Romans 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse... Pick it up in verse 12. Romans 5 and 12. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Now who was that one man? Adam. Adam. Go ahead and read. And death by sin. And death by sin. So who brought death on man? Adam, Adam did. Go ahead and read. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. All have sinned. Go ahead and read. For until the law, sin was in the world. Uh huh. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. You see that? You cannot have sin without the law. Teach. Now, you know, I've been arguing with brothers up and down, back and Man, I can. It's this, 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 this simple. I said, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave, leave y'all with this because it's this simple. You cannot sin without a law. Period. Nothing else to be said. Plan. The book just told you where there is no law, sin is not imputed. So you can't have sin without the law. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. What did you got to have a law in order to sin? You don't even know what sin is, but by the law. That's it, brother. Teach. It's that simple. I don't even know why I'm still arguing with these brothers. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But I won't be no more. <laughs> Not about this. We won't be. Verse, Go ahead and read. Verse fourteen. Uh huh. Nevertheless. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned from what? From, from Adam, Adam to, to Moses. Moses. I'm going to show you what we mean by this. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Because, you know, uh, when, when Adam brought this death on you, it lasted all the way up to the time of... I ain't going to let the cat out the bag. Go ahead and read. <laughs> yes, sir. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Uh-huh. Who is the figure of him that was to come. All right, so now who is the figure of him to come? That gives you a clue right there what we're talking about, death reigned from Adam to Moses. But we're going to show you what it means when he said death reigned from Adam to Moses. Mm -hmm. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, uh, um, let's go to 2 Timothy, the first chapter. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. And by the way, the name of the lesson today is called Grace. Simply Grace. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Uh, 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 Adam brought death on you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And that, with that death, with, with Adam brought sin on you too. And with that sin came death, right? That's right. Yes, yes. We got a problem? Yeah, but it's keep, keep on going. It comes in and comes back out. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have to hold right quick. Don't stop now. We're going to hold on right once. Y'all, hold on. We're having technical difficulties. Having technical difficulties. Uh, bear with us one second. We'll be back on. What is going on? Go out. Go out. Go. We're going to go backwards for it. Let it roll. Just come over here. Not hold on. That ain't going to work. Let me know. You guys are moving? Don't do that. Go up there. And click on the
You're in the south, sir? Less. Mm -hmm. oh, right. So. Let's go ahead and go down. Let's go ahead and go See, this is what we got you. Get out of here. That's right. Yeah, remind me two, two hours. Say four. Remind me four hours. Put me on. Put it right here. That's probably what the one that was. Remind me four hours. The arrow. Four hours. You be done. Cancel. Just leave it on there. It's gonna go out. The X right here. Okay, now get the get in here and restore the session. I hope this is gonna go back. Oh, you know how to get back on. For those that's online, please bear with us. We'll be Thank back you. with you shortly. Just in case. Too much stuff on Are you guys hot? Let me turn this up a little bit. Man, you feel it? Hot. Huh? You feel it? Yeah. Oh. You already feel it? Okay, here we go. 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 Just a minute, man. So we don't have two parts to it now? Yes. Here we go. We thank you for bearing with us. Okay. Um, sorry, we had little technical difficulties. Uh, we left. We, we're going to pick it up at 2 Timothy, the first chapter, right? Mm -hmm. first 2 sir. Timothy 2 and uh, 1. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. That's right. Yes, sir. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Hope everybody's back online joining us. Second uh, Timothy one and seven. Go ahead and read it. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, uh -huh. but of power and of love and of the sound mind. Go of ahead. The sound mind. Be not though. Be not though. Therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Uh huh. Nor of me, his prisoner. You see what Paul called himself a prisoner. Go ahead and read. He called other people. He's called himself a prisoner of Christ. But go ahead and read. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Uh huh. Who have saved us and called us with the holy calling. Go ahead. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. According to his own purpose and grace. This, uh, this you know, he showed us, showed us his unmerited, like they say, unmerited favor. I'll just say his favor towards man. Mm -hmm. He showed us his, his grace. Go ahead and read. Which was given us in Christ Jesus. Which was given us in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. Before the world began. Uh, before the world began. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Who have abolished death. You see that? He abolished death. Now, how did he abolish? What do you mean he abolished death? You know, uh, uh, um, Adam brought death on you by sin, didn't he? That's right. So now Jesus come to abolish that death that Adam put on you, which is that eternal death. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Who have abolished death and have brought life and immortality. And have brought life and immortality. What is immortality? That means you have an immortal body or you can live forever, right? That's right. So, uh, so uh, Adam brought death on you. 
Jesus get ready to, Jesus took that death off of you. Yes. Now you can get immortality. That's why death reigned from Adam to Moses. That's but when Jesus came, he took that death off of you. Yes, sir. That eternal death. Go ahead and finish that. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but go ahead. Read yeah. that over. Verse 10. Uh-huh. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who have abolished death and have brought life and immor immortality to light through the gospel. Through the gospel. Go ahead and read that verse 11. Go ahead. Where in two, I am appointed a preacher uh -huh. and an apostle uh -huh. and a teacher of the Gentiles. You see that Paul say he is a preacher, he an apostle, and a teacher. Because I had a brother say that a preacher ain't a teacher. Yes, he is. Come on, brother. That's exactly what he is. Make a plan. A pastor can be a teacher. He is a preacher. He is a, a teacher. Now, can he be apostle now? No, he can't be no apostle now. The apostles are written right here in the Bible. Can he be a prophet now? No, uh-uh. He said he left gifts unto man. He, uh, he left some uh, uh, teachers, some pastors, some prophets, right? But the prophets are right here in the Bible. The apostles are right here in the Bible. That's right. Now you can be a bishop. You can be a preacher. You can be a teacher. You can be an evangelist. And the pastor, which is a bishop, he's the highest one in the um, in the uh, church right now. That's right, brother. Teach. He the highest one in the church right now. So Paul said he was left where to I am left a, a preacher, appointed a preacher, an apostle, a teacher unto the Gentiles. That's now, it. let's go to uh uh because uh, Jesus came and abolished his death, didn't he? That's it. That eternal death. Now uh, uh, so you said death reigned from out of the boat. Let's see what you had to do in order to have your sins forgiven you under Moses' covenant. Let's go to Leviticus, the fourth chapter. Leviticus, the fourth chapter. Uh, let's see what by what means the Lord used to have your sins forgiven you under the old covenant. Leviticus 4 and 1. Leviticus 4 and 1. Leviticus 4 and 1. Everybody got it? Go ahead and read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done. Now you see that if a soul shall sin in ignorance and do, uh, 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 and, and do that which is against the commandments, because that's when you sin, when you're doing against the commandments and the law of God. Yes, that's sir. when you sin, isn't it? That's it, brother. Yes, sir. Concerning the things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them. Go ahead. If the priest that is anointed to do sin according to the sin of the people, uh -huh. then let him bring forth his sin, which he have sinned, a young bullock, without blemish unto the Lord for his sin offering. You see that? The priest had... The, the priest even had to bring up a bullock for a sin offering. Yes, sir. That's if he did that which was or sin against the commandments. He had to bring up a young bullock, didn't he? Yes, Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the, of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Uh-huh. And the priest that is is anointed shall take up the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before uh, the Lord. Uh-huh. Before the veil of the sanctuary. All right, so now, so now the priest, if he sinned against, against the Lord by doing anything against the commandments, he had to bring up his bullock, right? That's it. And sprinkle that blood, didn't he? That's it. Now, skip down to verse uh, 13. Skip down to verse 13. Go ahead and read. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, uh -huh. and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have... And they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done uh -huh. and are guilty. Now, see that? Just because you're in ignorance don't mean that you're not guilty. Yes. yes. Just because you sin in ignorance don't mean you're not guilty. That's why we had the Day of Atonement. Make a plan. Every year. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get off to that a little bit. But go ahead and read. Verse 14. Uh-huh. When the sin which they have sinned against it is known 
Then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin. Oh, so they had to come and offer that young bullock up too for their sins, right? That's it. Go ahead and read. And bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh-huh. And the elder of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock Go ahead. before the Lord. And the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. Go ahead. And the priest that is anointed shall bring up the bullock's blood to now the tabernacle of the congregation. Now you see that? And the priest that is anointed shall bring up the blood, bullock's blood. To the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood. Uh huh. And sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. Go ahead. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, that is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh huh. And he shall take up all. He shall take all his fat from him and burn it up, burn it upon the altar, and he shall... So it wasn't about the skin of the animal or the bullock. It wasn't about the inward parts of the fat of the bullock. It was about the blood. What? That's right. Go ahead and read that next verse. Verse 20. Uh-huh. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. Uh-huh. So shall he do with with this. Go ahead. And the priest shall make an atonement for them. Uh-huh. And it shall be for forgiven them. You see that? The, and the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. Now let's go, let's go solidify this. Let's make sure we know what makes this atonement for the people. Let's go to Leviticus, the 17th chapter. Leviticus 17. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Leviticus 17 and 10. So the, the priest would go, if you sin against the Lord in ignorance, against the commandments, you would have to go and offer up a bullock, wouldn't you? That's right. And then the priest would take that, that the, the bullock's blood and sprinkle it on the altar, wouldn't he? Yes, and sir. dip his finger in it or whatever he had to do with it, right? To make atonement for the people's sin, and then their sins were forgiven them, right? Amen. Leviticus 17. Let's see what this uh, blood does. Leviticus 17 and 10. Let's make sure we know what this blood does. 17 and 10. Go ahead and read it. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, uh -huh. I will even set my face against that, that soul that eateth blood. Uh -huh. And will cut him off from among his people. Isn't this the law right here? This is the law, this the law ain't it? That's you it. eat blood, you're going to be cut off from among your people because, you know, we were dealing with the circumcision uh, uh, last week, and then a the brother kept talking about uh, he done away with the law. See, that's all he told him to stay away from things strangled and from blood and from fornication. I said, man, that's the law. Yes. We're reading it right here. You eat blood, then you're supposed to be, you're going to be cut off from all your people. That's the law, ain't it? Yes, sir. So Peter was still giving them the law, the Gentiles the law. Still giving them the law. But go ahead and read. Verse 11. Uh-huh. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Go ahead. And I have given it, given it to you upon, upon the altar to make an atonement. For your soul. Oh, so he gave you the blood to make an atonement for your soul. Read it. Mm -hmm. For it, for it is the blood that maketh the atonement for the soul. You see that it is the blood that maketh the atonement for the soul, not the flesh of that animal, not the inward parts of that animal. And then God did this for free, didn't he? Yeah. This is a free gift he yeah. given you because he could kill you on the spot. He said, no, I'm going to get these animals and I'm going to get this man a chance. So because so when he come, start sacrificing his, his livestock, he going to go broke. He going to stop sinning. Break it down, brother. Make it plain. You understand what I'm saying? So he gave man a uh, he gave man a free gift with, by giving him this animal and telling him, go ahead and use his blood and then I'll forgive you for your sins. That was a free gift he gave, didn't he? Teach. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh let's go to Second Chronicles because because this blood does something else for you too. Let's go to Second Chronicles, the 29th chapter. Second Chronicles 29. And we're gonna pick it up at verse uh one. Second Chronicles 29 and 1. Let's see what else this, this blood is going to do for you. 2 Chronicles 29 and 1. 
We gonna get we we if you if you if you really understood, we dealing really with grace now, really. Second Second Chronicles twenty nine and one. Go ahead and read. Hezekiah began to reign. When he was five and twenty years old, uh -huh. and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Abijah, and the daughter of Zechariah, and he did that which was right in the in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Uh huh. He in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them, and he brought in the priests and the Levites. And gathered them together into the east street, and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, <clears throat> sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord, the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Uh -huh. for, our, for our fathers have trespassed and done that which was, was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God, uh -huh. and have forsaken him. And have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord. You know, and turned their backs. So he said, our fathers, they have sinned against the Lord. Yes. Sir. And turned their backs. Go ahead and read. But Hezekiah, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, didn't he? That's it. Bro. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the, in the holy place upon the God of Israel. Unto the God of Israel. Uh huh. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem. You see that? Because they sinned against the Lord and they weren't burning incense and sacrificing out like that. The wrath of the Lord came upon Judah and Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And he had delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. Uh huh. Because they made these burnt offerings and sacrifices to the Lord to, to, for the Lord to forgive them for their sins, didn't he? That's right. But That's they right. stopped doing all this. Come on. Go ahead and read. And he said, A wrath of the Lord came upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he have delivered them to trouble. Yes, sir. To the astonishment and to hissing, and to see with your eyes. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword. Uh-huh. And our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. You see that? You see how they fall by the sword? Our sons, our daughters, go to the captivity for this. Mm -hmm. That's why we're in captivity now, right? Because what our forefathers done. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel. Uh-huh. Now he's going to try to, he's going to make this thing right with the Lord now. He's going to bring Israel back to the Lord now. We well, go ahead and see how he's going to do this. Go ahead. He said, it's my heart to make a covenant with the Lord. Go ahead. So you make a covenant, we're making an agreement with the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, we gonna, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we make an agreement, right? Plain go ahead and read. Plain. <clears throat> now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons. Okay, skip down to verse uh, 16. Let's see what he's going to do. Go ahead and read. And the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord uh -huh. to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. See, first thing they did was clean out the temple. You understand? Clean up because, you know, they had messed the temple up and everything. Uh, 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 the ones that was in there before these, these priests got there, They're the fathers, they had messed the temple up. So they brought out all, brought all type. They brought all type of 